Hi, my name is Danielle, and I'm going to be reading Otto's Violin, written by Susan Hood and illustrated by Sally Warren Comport. And this story is brought to you by the Pebble Center, a project of Tulane University's Stone Center for Latin American Studies and the New Orleans Public Library. And I would like to thank Simon and Schuster for letting us read this book today. So this story takes place in Paraguay. Ada Rios grew up in a town made of trash. Every morning at dawn, Ada heard the first garbage trucks rumble and roll down the road to Katura. Beep, beep, beep. Backing into the landfill, they tipped their loads up and up and crashed. The trash came tumbling down, 1,500 tons each day. Ada and her friends watched as the Goncheros recyclers scrambled, tearing into plastic bags with long-handled cooks, pushing aside moldy produce and grabbing anything they could recycle or sell. The going rates, five cents for a pound of cardboard, 10 cents for a pound of plastic. This noisy, stinking, sweltering sun was not the most nurturing neighborhood. Otta watched, eyes wide, but she didn't say much. And yet she liked to imagine each garbage truck was a box of surprises. One never knew what might be inside. Her father had found appliances, toys, perfumes, and antique watches. One woman even discovered a small box full of gold jewelry. Little did Otto know, there was a bigger surprise waiting for her in the landfill. Every day when Otto's parents went to work, Grandmother Marion cared for Otto and her little sister, Noelia. Grandma loved to sing rock and roll songs to the 1960s. The girls grew up on the tunes of the Beatles, Simon and Garfunkel, and Creedence Clearwater Revival. Otto loved to sing too, but only when no one was listening. Otta's dad brightened the night with stories and songs of great musicians. He turned up the radio and pointed out the sounds each instrument made. Otta heard one above all the others, sing with the strings of the violin. When the girls started school, Grandma returned to work as a recycler, collecting bottles and cans in the city. Classes lay out at noon. Young Otta was in charge of Noelia until her parents were done with work. At first, the girls stayed close to home, playing with Grandma Marian's doggies and making sand cakes in the dirt. Soon they joined their cousins, playing hide-and-seek or a game of handball in the streets. In time, they ventured farther afield, walking down to the bodega to get candy. But Otto noticed the teenagers hanging out in the alleys, grumbling about life in the landfill looming ahead. What would happen to them, to her, to her little sister? She watched as the other kids turned to games and got into fights. One day, when Otto was 11 years old, her grandmother saw a sign posted on the wall of the chapel. Violin, guitar, cello, taught Saturdays at 8 a.m. Fabio Chavez. How Grandma had longed to learn music. Too late for her, maybe, she thought, but not for her granddaughters. She signed them up without asking them, or their parents. Otto's heart sang out. Thanks to her abuela, she could leave her worries behind and learn to play. At the first class, the teacher, Fabio Chavez, had three guitars and two violins to share. Otto chose a violin right away, but ten children had signed up. Frustrated, Otto and her friends found, their, found that there were not enough instruments to go around. And there was a bigger problem. Everyone quickly realized that the children would need to practice at home, but it wasn't safe to be seen with an expensive instrument in Katsura, where a violin is worth more than a house. Watching the children play amid broken glass and rusty metal, Senor Chavez knew he had to do something. He remembered a band called Les Luthiers, Luthiers that made its own instruments. That was it. He asked Nicolas Cola Gomez, a ganchero and a carpenter, for help. Senor Gomez found a discarded drum with a big hole in it. What could he use to fix it? He picked through the trash and discovered an old x-ray film. Would that work? It did. Senor Gomez kept experimenting, and others, like Tito Romero, helped. Inventing instruments wasn't easy, but they fiddled around, discovering which materials hit just the right notes. They transformed oil drums into cellos, water pipes into flutes, and packing crates into guitars. Soon there were enough instruments for the children who wanted to play. Otto chose a violin made from an old pant can, an aluminum baking tray, a fork, and pieces of wooden crates. Worthless to thieves, it was invaluable to her. It was a violin of her very own. Senor Chavez set up a strict schedule of three-hour lessons. The class had no classrooms, so they played outside, despite the 100-degree heat and sudden downpours. At first, Otto and the others struggled. Sharps and flats chained, clanged, and clashed. Playing an instrument is a process. It doesn't matter if one is rich or poor, ugly, fat, thin. You cannot learn to play an instrument overnight, Senor Chavez told the children. Some kids decided it was too much work and gave up, but not Otta. 
After lessons, she would practice at home, sometimes two hours a day. In time, the screeches, twangs, and tweets hit all the right notes. Their class became a small island where Travis taught them to respect themselves and one another. Be kind, always say please and thank you, say you're sorry, be dedicated when you commit to something, Senor Travis told the children. Soon the ragtag crew of kids learned to tune in, to listen to one another, to band together. The recycled orchestra was born. From then on, there was something new in the air in Katsura. Goncheros trudging home from the landfill might lift their heads to hear the sounds of Ada's violin, or the strains of Bebby's cello, or the strum of Noelia's guitar. A symphony of sound helped to lift them beyond the heat, the stench, and their aching backs. With her violin, Ada could close her eyes and imagine a different life. She could soar on the high, bright, bittersweet notes to a place far away. She could be who she was meant to be. As Ada's skill grew, so did her confidence. Once timid, she now took center stage playing solos. She helped teach the younger children too. Her teachers and fellow students took note. When she was 12 years old, Otto was named a first violinist. Imagine, she was first at something. Shortly after, she and her 39 fellow musicians were invited to perform concerts in Katsura and later in the nearby capital city of Asuncion. Words of this extraordinary orchestra spread. Soon they were asked to perform in other cities and even other countries. Otto and her friends flew on their first airplane, stayed in their first hotel, swam in the bright blue waters of Rio de Janeiro, sampled their first pastries and pineapple, and saw sights they never imagined. The world dazzled them, just as they dazzled the world. When Otto was 16, the orchestra received a very special invitation. They were asked to tour the world-famous rock band. More than 35,000 people awaited them at their first concert stop in, Bot in Botaga, Colombia. Otto was more than nervous. She didn't know how to enter or how to greet the audience. She went blank. She saw a giant stage with glaring lights and heard people screaming. But she didn't have to worry. As the recycled orchestra took the stage, the people who had paid to see the rock band cheered for them. The enormous audience sang and swayed to the music as the orchestra played. And as the performance came to a close, a crescendo of cheers, chants, and applause resounded the park. The astonished kids bowed, grinning at one another. They had discovered the surprise waiting in the landfill, buried in the trash was music, and buried in themselves was something to be proud of. And that was the story of Otto's violin. So a fun activity you can do at home is finding materials to make your own recycled instruments. Like you could find Tupperwares and um, silverware to use as drumsticks or any strings you have and make your own instruments and make your own recycled orchestra. Here are some key words in Spanish from the story. Number one, we have gancheros, which means recyclers or the people who looked through the landfill for things they could recycle for money. Abuela means grandmother. Violin is very similar to English violin. Guitarra, also very similar to guitar. And finally, violoncello, which means cello. Thank you.